All right, you guys, today we're making our layered lasagna. Now, we have a lot of steps to do. First things first, we're gonna work on getting the sauce done because that's gonna take a while to reduce and kind of turn into a sauce. All right, what we're gonna do is we got our saucepan. We're gonna put it on medium to high heat. We're gonna add maybe a tablespoon or so of extra virgin olive oil. That's okay to cook with. We want that kind of extra olivey taste. It'll be nice. So once we get our oil up to heat, we're gonna add one Spanish onion. Have that right in there. And we're gonna just cook these onions down until they are translucent. It's gonna add a nice aromatic to it. There's just something about the smell of fried onions. It's just amazing. And then you add the garlic and that whole aroma together. You just know something good is gonna be cooking and coming out of your kitchen. So we're going to cook these down, I would say, I don't know, five, ten minutes. Just get them nice and translucent so we can add our other ingredient. Alrighty, so our onions are nice and sweated out. What we're doing now is we're just taking like four, maybe five cloves of garlic. We're not chopping it, we're just crushing it. We're crushing it to relieve or release some of that allicin in the, gar in the garlic. And that's just going to add more aromatics. It's going to make the sauce come out. Real nice, get that flavor in it. And plus it's an Italian sauce, of course it's gonna have garlic in it, it's garlic and everything. So we're just gonna let this kind of cook out, get tender, and then we'll move on to the next part. Alrighty, so the onions have brown, the garlic is getting tender. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add maybe a tablespoon or two of tomato paste. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna not only thicken our sauce later on, it's also gonna add more acidity and more taste and body to the actual final product of the sauce. We're gonna lower the heat a little bit. And it's gonna to stick to the pan, that's fine. We're just kinda of collecting all of it in one glob here. Now while this is cooking down, we're gonna add just a little bit of dry oregano. Not too much, oregano is pretty overpowering. Just a little bit, just to give it that familiar sauce taste that we all know. You can already smell it. It smells like a, like a pizzeria. So that's how you know you're doing well. So now while this is doing its thing, we need a full can, 28 ounces of San Marzano whole tomatoes that are peeled. All right, so we're gonna throw that in there. Beautiful. Grab a little bit of water to get some of that extra out. Just a little bit. So make sure you got it all in there. Awesome. And we are going to grab a wooden spoon. We're just going to kind of mash the tomatoes a bit just to kind of get like a nice chunky body. Now you can do it as chunky or not as chunky as you'd like. You know, at this point you can even add some red pepper flakes if you want a little spice to it. We're going to go pretty simple. We're just going to leave it the way it is. Uh, don't season it with any salt because remember this is reducing. When you reduce stuff, you're kind of concentrating all of that flavor. So if you add a little salt now, too much salt now, when it reduces, it's gonna be very salty. So just wait a little bit, salt it at the end. Just keep kind of working those tomato chunks. If you want, you can get a potato masher and just kind of like work it like that. I don't know where mine is, so we're doing it the old grandma style with the wooden spoon. And now that we've got it to a consistency that we like, we're gonna put this on medium to low and we're gonna let this cook out for the next 45, well, half hour to 45, depending. Which is perfect because we got a lot of stuff to do. Now that we have the sauce on a, a lower heat, just a reminder to stir occasionally, or else it will burn. There's a lot of sugars that are going on in tomatoes and they can actually burn. So just keep an eye on that. So the next step is we're making homemade pasta. Over here, we got 550 grams of all-purpose flour. Now we've made pasta on the channel before, but we're just gonna go over it pretty quickly. We're gonna make a mountain. We're gonna put a little divot in the middle, a little volcano, all right? Then we're gonna add five eggs. You want about an egg per 100 grams of flour. So we're using five. Now we're gonna put all five eggs right in the middle of that divot. Oh, we got leakage already. Get back in there. It's all right, the leakage is fine. So while that's there, we're gonna add, oh God. We're gonna add some salt. We're gonna add just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. 
And it's not all gonna matter that those are on the counter. We're gonna shove it right back in there anyway. There we go. Well, doing what it wants. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. And we're just gonna start beating these eggs. Right in the middle of the divot, kind of working the flour in. Little to little, or just all over. Like I said, it all comes together. It looks a little messy. And that's the thing is with uh, with homemade pasta, you just got to be patient with it because it just looks like we're making a mess. And we are, we are making a mess, but it's a controlled mess. And that's the important bit. That's controlled enough. All right, so now that we've got that beaten in, we are gonna take a bench scraper. And we're just gonna kind of fold everything over. Fold it over, work it out. Again, it's gonna look like a mess. You're gonna be panicking. My wife's gonna come home and destroy the kitchen, but don't worry. You're just gonna keep working it. Now I believe we can start kneading this together. Just gonna work it. There we go. If you think it's a little too dry, add a little more olive oil. I think we're okay. All right, hold on. I need to get my jacket off. I'm dying of heat stroke. Ah, oh, ladies. <laughs> there we go. It's so fucking hard. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna let this guy kind of chill out, let all that gluten develop in the fridge for like, I don't know, 15 minutes. And we'll be back when we're ready for the next step. Sauce is saucing, dough is rested. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll out our sheets. We're moving along. We're gonna just roll these out. We're gonna start from the thinnest setting, work our way down to the thickest. So we've already gotten one. He's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. You should be able to see your hand through it. All right, that's how you know it's good. Especially for lasagna, you want nice thin layers. There it is. That's pretty satisfying. I mean, it's fun to watch. Alrighty. Like I said, you've seen us make pasta on, on this channel before, but I think a lasagna, I think it just truly deserves a nice homemade sheet of pasta. I mean, you could totally buy the box ones. And what you would do then is you would boil it, and then you would put it in a, uh, once it's cooked, you put it in a bowl with ice, let it chill out, and then you would begin to layer the lasagna that way. So now that we've rolled out the pasta, what we're gonna do now make is a bechamel. It's kind of a light creamy sauce. It's gonna go so nice with the lasagna and kind of give it that ooey gooey texture. So what we've done is we took a whole stick of butter, we melted it down. We're gonna make a roux by adding 63 grams of flour. And we're gonna whisk this until it becomes a paste, until it starts smelling nutty. So we're gonna whisk this together, make sure we get all the lumps out. Every time when we make a roux, it goes flying everywhere. There we go. It's coming along pretty good. Most of the lumps are just about out. Keep stirring or else this will burn. It's not smelling nutty just yet, but it's getting there. Okay, now that that's going, we're gonna take four and a half cups of milk, cold. We're gonna stir it in a little at a time. Keep stirring, keep stirring. Get that going. Let me grab this out of the way here. That should be fine right there. Keep stirring it. This is gonna thicken up pretty quickly. So once that's incorporated, add a little more. There we go. Just keep stirring it. We're doing pretty good, we got no lumps. That's the best part. You don't want any lumps in your vision milk. Going. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more. And I think we're actually pretty good to put the rest in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this down and let it thicken up. So, our bechamel has thickened beautifully. It's got a nice consistency. So at this point, we're gonna turn the heat off because we don't wanna burn it. We're gonna add a couple things to it. We're gonna add some Salt for flavoring, obviously. Two healthy pinches, maybe three. You're gonna add some black pepper. Be 
go. And a good Bichon now definitely needs a little freshly grated nutmeg. Get as much as you want. We like nutmeg in this house, so we kind of go with it. And give this a quick taste. That's perfect. I love that. Awesome. Now we're gonna get to the point where we have to brown the meat and then we're ready for construction. So we're gonna go on to the next step. All right, so what we're doing now is we're gonna brown the meat for the lasagna. What I like to do is I go to the supermarket and I get those uh, kind of like those meatloaf mixes. So this has uh, pork, veal, and beef. And I think that's actually perfect. It's a perfect accompaniment for our sauce. Put it in the cold pan. We're just gonna brown it. We're not doing anything crazy with it. We're gonna brown it and put it directly into our sauce. All right, meat's been browned. We're gonna season it liberally with a little bit of salt. Because remember, it's going in our sauce. We didn't season our sauce yet, so that's okay. Black pepper's good. A couple turns. And you're gonna see there's a lot of liquid in here, and that's totally fine. We're gonna actually use that liquid to thin out our sauce that thickened up. So we're just gonna dump the whole thing in there. There we go. Perfect. Throw that in the sink. And we're just gonna push that all together. And that's our kind of quick, easy bolognese. Good. Right. Give this sauce a little taste test. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's pretty good. I am gonna add just a touch of water. Water's fine. Okay, we're good. Okay, so now we're moving on to assembly. Essentially, we're making a cake. It's that simple. Step by step. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of our sauce. The sauce is gonna go in the bottom of the pan, and we do that just so it's easier later to make the slices so everything slides out nice and easily. So we add our little bit of sauce here. Okay, perfect. Then we're gonna take a couple sheets of our homemade lasagna. We're gonna put them down. Yes, these are raw. These will cook in the oven. So we got that. You can break them up a little bit to help easy, easily fit. Okay, that's the first step. Now we're gonna layer more sauce. There we go. Now once we've done that, we're gonna add some Picorino Romano. I like the taste of it. It's a little more sour than regular cheese. I think it's gonna go good. We're gonna add our bechamel. Bechamel, we're just gonna kind of layer it on top like that. Perfect. We're gonna add a couple knobs of fresh ricotta, ricotta. Put that on top. And then we're gonna add our fresh mozzarella. Okay. Then we do it again. Now we're on to the fifth layer. This one might be the last layer. Yeah. No, oh, no, we got five layers out of it. That's not bad. Not bad at all. I like to squish it kind of like just to even it out here. Put our sauce. There we go. Now we're gonna put our bechamel that we still have quite a lot of them. Add some more Parmesan. More ricotta. At this point, like some parsley would be nice too, but I did not buy it because I'm silly. And then we're gonna add some more of the mozzarella. And that will do it. So what I like to do after that's done is I like to hit it with some more black pepper. There we go. A couple extra hits of that. 
And now that's gonna go in a 375 degree oven for 40 minutes to start. After 40 minutes, we're gonna take it out and we're gonna take a look at it. I think our lasagna is finished. We're gonna pull her out. Oh yeah, that'll do. We're gonna set her down. Look at that. Everything is beautifully golden brown, tasty. Now, you're gonna wanna dig into this right away. I'm telling you that's a mistake. You're gonna let this rest for a minimum of, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. I know the temptation is there, but if you pull this out now, it's gonna be a goopy, goopy mess. There's a lot of lactose in here, a lot of fucking, a lot of fat. Do not pull it out, or do not cut into it. Let it rest, and then we'll get into it later. All right? All righty, lasagna is finished. We're gonna cut into this bad boy. Oh yeah, it cuts pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah, bud. Look at that. And there it is, my friends. A beautiful five layer, traditional Italian lasagna with a little bit of bechamel, ricotta, fresh mozzarella. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit more marinara on top. Maybe you can add a little bit more of the bechamel if you're more of the rich, uh, the rich type. But other than that, I can't imagine a more perfect and delicious meal for a cool winter's night. You can enjoy this by the TV. You can enjoy this with your spouse. You can just enjoy it by yourself. It's fantastic. So anyway, I want to thank you all for coming by. I hope you try this dish out for yourself. Leave a comment telling me how it went. Uh, you can even tell me a comment for a suggestion that you like to do for your lasagnas. But anyway, enjoy. Leave a, you know, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Have a beer on me. Hungover chef, yeah, you know I go hard. If I'm not in the kitchen, you can catch me at the bar, yeah. Cheese, lettuce, or whatever, gonna make it right. A shot of Henny, help decide what we make tonight. This the life. If